Remember, as we're doing class, just to keep things in order, raise your hand if you want to speak. Is that, is that clear? Yes. 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 There are two types of education we talked about. What's one of them? True education. What's the other one? No, no, what do you get some? Papal education. Papal education. Papal education. And what are some things we learned about papal education? What is it all about? Eguloki. Kemi? Purapan Catholic School, Bible, Zene Abadachilo. Bible and chains. Okay, and what does the what does true education do instead? Bible is the center of them. Yes, Bible is at the center of education. The Bible shilo shikha Now we study a lot of different things. We won't go over it again, but you should know, or at least be familiar with... <clears throat> now, the Roman Catholic Church invented this education system to propagate their doctrines. Roman Catholic Mondoli, a shikha babushata ke tori kore chilo, to propagate their, propagate their doctrines. So we have the Pope here. Vicarious Philidi. Remember this. Vicarious Philidi. What did he invent? He invented the degree. The degree was to say, ha. This man has finished these, his education and he's now above everybody else. Because he is working for the church. Now that degree was propagated to what's called the University of Paris. Uh, Paris and University. <coughs> Where is Paris? Paris, go to Chilo. Which country is Paris in? Paris, go to the Chilo. Donut? Not New York? France. France. Yes, it's in the country of France. Paris, go to France. Does this make sense? Why would it be in France? Anyone remember what happened in 538? What happened in 538? And then it went all the way to 1798. 1260 days. What happened in this year? Pope, 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 Pope,
So the Pope was connected with the government. So the Pope first got his power in the country of France. And then there were two universities. These ones were English universities. One of them we talked about yesterday. English University. English University. English University by English Bishop with the Oh, yeah. Bishop with the Bishop with the Lagula. Melissa? I'm asking a question. Okay. He got a degree from University of Paris. No, the University of Paris started to teach with degrees. That is the first one. Um, I don't know if it's the first one. It, it was a very big and important one. Okay, this is a good question. Let me clarify one thing. The Pope invented the degree. A long time ago. And that degree was then used at the University of Paris. In other words, at Paris, people that finished their education graduated with a degree. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Okay, so the university, the university of Paris was directly a result of papal education. A university of Paris, by Paris, Bishop of Paris, a Pope Babel Saponer, acta direct Toronto Falafel. What's the name of the English university that copied the methods of the Pope in the University of Paris? So, what university is the one University of Paris Pope the one who is 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 in America, there was another university that copied Oxford. What was it? Arakta. America, Arakta University, Chilo, Jeta, Oxford, Ki Follow Kurishilo, Nakul Kurishilo. So Harvard. Harvard. And from these two universities, they are still teaching today. At A. Duita University, Teke, Akonokin to Shishika Jolche. Pretty much every university in the world uses the system of degrees. That is including Adventist systems. Now what am I saying? Are degrees evil? Are people who have degrees evil? Absolutely not. Most of my friends have degrees. Yeah, Raya has a degree. All the workers in EBM have degrees. EBM is not the worker, I said, that's a degree. Probably all of them do. Yeah, because you see, all the schools have copied this method. But in the last days, there will be another group of people. The army of youth. The 144,000. This army of youth, they are trained. Let me ask you something. Do soldiers have to have degrees? Open your Bibles with me. To Second Timothy. In the last days, there will be a army of youth. Timothy is an example. And Paul was saying to Timothy in Second Timothy two verse three, "You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ." Paul is saying to 
No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. As we go through the history of Adventist education, you, you will see that many of the problems in Adventist education result because we do not know this history. And because we don't have the faith to do education God's way. The Bible says in Proverbs. Let's see if I can remember the verse reference. I think it's 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. There's a word in there called train. What does it mean in Bangla? That means to teach, right? But to train actually means... Roshikon. Roshikon is probably a better translation now. Because it means like when you're training a soldier, do you just teach him from a whiteboard everything that he's supposed to do? How do you train a soldier? Someone raise your hand. Someone raise your hand and give me some ideas of how soldiers are trained. Okay, one example. They go to the field. They go to the field, okay, they have to they have to practice working hard, right? What else do soldiers what else do soldiers do to train? Jonathan? Practice their aim. Practice their oh yeah, they have to shoot. They have to practice their aim. Two more answers. Someone else raised their hand. What else do soldiers do? Hastima? No. Uh, talk song. No, they do different types of exercise. Butsi, Chomotkar, Ayar Jonash. They prepare themselves for the war. They prepare themselves to. Okay, how? Keep it. Yeah, they want to so to keep themselves healthy, whatever they need to do to prepare themselves. Yeah. I'll, oh, yeah. yeah. They go for they go for fake fake practice. Yes. Like uh, like they set up a place where they go for doing the fake practice oh, so that they can obstacle be course. Mm -hmm. obstacle, obstacle course. course. Raise your hand, I'll call on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do you know what our school is actually called? This, this whole place is called Be Well. But this school is actually part of a network of small schools in Asia. It's called the uh, Institute of East, East Asia. India or East Asia Asian Training. Training Bangladesh. Yeah. This one's training. Yeah, Center. Bangladesh. Institute of East Asia Training, Bangladesh. It is called East Asia Institute of East Asia Training. It is a Bangladesh section. Hmm. Kintu training money. Training money. We are a training school. We don't just learn theory. We get in the field, literally. And we go on mission trips. You don't just learn things to practice them on a piece of paper. 
You actually go out and share what you've learned. তুমি জিনিস এই সব কিছু শিখে তোমার কাগজে লেখো না তুমি এগুলো শিখে বাইরে যে এগুলো ব্যবহার করো তাই না We give you responsibilities. আমরা তোমাদেরকে দায়িত্ব ভার দেই We put you in charge of managing certain finances, managing certain departments. আমরা তোমাদেরকে তোমাদেরকে এক একটা ডিপার্টমেন্ট চালানোর জন্য দায়িত্ব দিই তোমাদেরকে কোনো একটা ফাইন্যান্স বা অর্থ অর্থ रिलेटेड কোনো কিছু নিয়ে আমরা তোমাদেরকে দায়িত্ব দেই We try to do the other things we talked about in true education. এবং আমরা সুষম শিক্ষা বা প্রকৃত শিক্ষার ভিতরে যতগুলো পড়া ছিল ওগুলো আমরা ফলো করার চেষ্টা করি And God is helping us to keep improving little by little এবং ঈশ্বর আমাদেরকে সাহায্য করতেছে যেন আমরা আস্তে আস্তে করে সম্পূর্ণ দিকে আগাই What happened in 1844? What happened in 1844? What happened in 1844? Disappointment. Yeah, the great disappointment. What was what was this um do you remember Ellen White's first vision? We read it in class. Amra class e porechhilam. She was given that vision because people were discouraged. Tade take ei doshon ta dewa hoychilo karon manush utsaho hariye felechilo. The midnight cry they doubted was real. Modhorater uchchoshor ei ta tara mone korechhilo je hoyto mithya. Before the midnight cry. A modhorater uchchoshorer age purbe. There were a few schools they were trying to do true education koyekta school chilo jara sushomo shikha babostha korar chesta korchilo one of these schools was called overland college ah oi school er bhitore ekta school ta chilo jar naam chilo overland college they had been reading their bibles tara tader bible porchilo and they had been reading about true education as seen in the bible ebong tara bible onujay sushomo shikha porar chesta korchilo they understood this history शिक्षा এবং তারা সিদ্ধান্ত নিয়েছিল যে এই শিক্ষাটা শুধুমাত্র তাদের জন্যই হওয়া উচিত নয় যাদের টাকা পয়সা আছে পড়াশোনা করার মতো সো ইন দ্য স্টেট অফ ওহাইও ইন দ্য ইউনাইটেড স্টেটস তাই ইউনাইটেড বা যুক্তরাষ্ট্রে ওহাইওতে থাকার পরিবর্তে অন 640 एकर्स অফ ল্যান্ড 680 एकर्स অফ 640 640 एकर জমির উপরে দে ওপেন্ড ওভারল্যান্ড কলেজ তারা ওভারল্যান্ড কলেজ খুললো দে পুট ওয়ার্কশপস ইন এবং ওইখানে ওয়ার্কশপ তারা তৈরি করে টু টিচ ব্ল্যাক স্মিথিং এন্ড ক্লোদিং মেকিং তারা ওইখানে কুম কামারের কামারের না কুম কামার না কুম যারা যারা ওই যে ব্ল্যাক স্মিথ লোহা কামার না কামার তারপরে কামারে কাজ করার জন্য ওটার ওয়ার্কশপ খুলছে তারপরে কাপড় সেলাই করার জন্য ওটার ওয়ার্কশপ খুলছে যেন ওরা শিখতে পারে এগ্রিকালচার এন্ড বিল্ডিং এবং বিল্ডিং তৈরি করেছিল তারপরে কৃষি কাজের জন্য তৈরি করেছিল ইন আদার ওয়ার্ডস ইট ওয়াজ এ ম্যানুয়াল লেবার স্কুল অন্য ভাষায় বলা যায় যে এটা শারীরিক কাজ করার জায়গা ছিল স্কুল ইন দিস স্কুল দে মেড ইট সো দ্যাট মানি টাকা ওয়াজ নট দ্য রিজন ইউ কুডন্ট কাম টু স্কুল তারা এমন ব্যবস্থা করেছিল যে টাকা যেন তোমার সামনে বাধা না হয়ে যায় যে তুমি স্কুলে আসতে পারবে না এনিওয়ান দ্যাট ওয়ান্টেড টু অ্যাটেন্ড ওভারল্যান্ড যে কেউ যারা ওভারল্যান্ডে এসে ওভারলিনে এসে যুক্ত হতে চায় কুড কাম এন্ড ওয়ার্ক তারা আসতে পারে এবং কাজ করতে পারে টু পে ফর देयर স্কুল তাদের স্কুলের টিউশন পে করার জন্য বা দেওয়ার জন্য বেতন দেওয়ার জন্য দে উড পিক ওয়ান অফ দ্য ইন্ডাস্ট্রিজ তারা যে কোনো একটা কাজ কর্মক্ষেত্র বেছে নিত ডু ইউ নো হাউ মানি আওয়ার্স দে উড ওয়ার্ক এ ডে তোমরা কি জানো যে তারা দিনে কয় ঘন্টা কাজ করত দে উড ওয়ার্ক 4 আওয়ার্স এ ডে তারা দিনে 4 ঘন্টা কাজ করত ইন অর্ডার টু পে ফর देयर এডুকেশন তাদের পড়াশোনার খরচ দেওয়ার জন্য তারা দিনে 4 ঘন্টা করে কাজ করত এন্ড देयर স্কুল বিকেম সো পপুলার 
they had more applications than they could accept students. Tadar school da ato ta bikhato hoye giye chilo je tader joto ta seat chilo ba joto shongkhok lok tara nite pato tar theke aro beshi application dorkhasto tader kache jomo hoto. They kept the Bible at the center. Tara Bible rekhe chilo tader moddhom sthane. Every class had the Bible used in it. Prottekta class e tara Bible byabohar korto. The English language class used the Bible. English language ba ingreji bhasha shikhar je class ta chilo tara Bible byabohar korto. The math class even used the Bible. They had a very big emphasis on anti-slavery. Anti-slavery, they were abolitionists. You know what slaves are? Dash Protha. They are Dash Protha Birodhita Kurchi. Uh, in the United States, in the early 1800s, there were a lot of slaves from Africa. So they spent a lot of time talking about how the Bible shows slavery is not a good thing. In math class, they would talk about how much each slave was worth, and if you delivered a bunch of slaves, how much money that was actually worth. They had a very heavy emphasis on mission. Their buildings were simple. They had a philosophy that if any man came to Oberlin, he could go out and start a mission wherever he went with just one cob of corn. It was basically the opposite of the big degree granting schools. And because of this, they were able to multiply. The students that graduated from Oberlin, they weren't very big or famous in the world. They weren't. But they went from this college to Cuba. India, the American South, and Europe. Tara, kintu tara ei college theke, ei college er shikhartira, tara Cuba the giye chilo, India the giye chilo, American South the giye chilo, Europe the giye chilo. To start over forty other schools in just ten years. And we cannot actually count how many other schools were started as a result of Oberlin College. Unfortunately, in the year 1844, they forgot the lessons they learned and started going the way of all the other schools. But there was one man who visited this school and spent a short time there. His name was Goodlow Harper Bell. We'll just call him Bell. 
Now, Bell eventually visited one of our Adventist institutions. I Bell Nokta, our Adventist school. Let me go back a little bit in his story, though. Bell was not born to a rich family. When Bell was 19 years old, his father died. And since he was the oldest one in his, the oldest man in his family, he had to support all of his brothers and sisters. To do this, he started teaching. So, his father died at age 19. What does he do to support his family? He starts teaching. What did he teach? He taught in a little elementary school. He had a gift for teaching. Soon, other villages were asking him to hold schools for them. So their children could learn how to read, write, and do their math. <coughs> Unfortunately, he started to work really hard and eventually became dyspeptic. That means that he was sick, he was very sick. And he was searching for a cure. He heard about this new institution. To help people get well. It was in Michigan and it was run by these people called Seventh-day Adventists. Where do you think he went? What do, you, what do you think? Where do you think he went? Battle Creek Sanitarium. Yes, he went to Battle Creek Sanitarium. That time it was called the Western Health Reform Institute. Western Health Institute. So he goes to. What's it called? Western Health. Bell did not go there to change his religion. Bell came to a school institute. Yeah, it's like their clinic. Yeah. Bell came to a clinic. Yeah. Bell came to a He was one of their first patients. He was one of their first patients. He didn't go there to change his religion. He went there because he was seeking a cure for his sickness. But while he was there, he had an Adventist roommate. And in the middle of the night, he heard that Adventist roommate praying for him. That man was praying, Oh Lord, please save Goodlow Bell, save Brother Bell. And that touched his heart. He started to ask questions. He asked, What do you guys believe? Are you guys crazy people or do you guys believe the Bible? So he, hmm? There was crazy people back then, like what crazy and what like a sect, a satanic group of people. Some people accuse Adventists of being uh, what do you yeah, a sect, a cult. They accuse them of being a cult. There's no word for cult. <laughs> 
Don't worry. Don't. You understand, Melissa? We'll continue. And so he started studying his Bible, and eventually he became a Seventh day Adventist. Now, about this time, this is about eight, late 1860s, early 70s. The Adventist church was realizing we have a lot of kids that are going to public schools. Adventist realized And they're not learning very much about the truth. They're leaving the church. They're not becoming missionaries. And they're getting into other things like drugs and alcohol and all the things that come with public schools. James White said, we need to have a school. James White said, we need to have a school. And so they invited Goodlow Bell to start a school. Mr. Bell accepted. Mr. Bell and he started teaching classes in the evening to a group of young people. Just 12 of them. A few years later, in 1872, Ellen White had an important vision. This is her first major vision about education. You can read her best book on education right there. It's called Education. And in this vision, she learned a number of things. I'll share five with you today. The first one that she learned is that young people should not go to school too early. Many people think that young people should start school at age 3 or 4, maybe 5. She actually said that it's better to start school at age 8 or 9. Before that point, the parent, or until that age, the parents should be the only teachers of their children. And they should teach them mostly from outside and from lessons, not from books. So, children... Until eight to nine. <laughs> no, above. Okay. The second thing that she learned was that teachers should not control the minds of their students. Most of the schools that are um, false education schools. school. They just have a system of read, memorize, and regurgitate. 
মনে রাখা ঢেলে দেওয়া যেটা আমাদের শিক্ষা ব্যবস্থা I think this is a problem in Bangladesh but it's also a problem all over the world. আমার মনে হয় এটা বাংলাদেশেরও সমস্যা যেটা বললাম বাংলাদেশেরও সমস্যা তারা পরে মুক্ত করে ঢেলে দেয় পরীক্ষা হলে যায় এটা সব জায়গায় একই সমস্যা। This is an example of teachers controlling minds of their students. এটা হচ্ছে একটা উদাহরণ যে শিক্ষকরা তাদের শিক্ষার্থীদের মন পরিচালনা করতেছে। We don't want you to do that here. আমরা চাই না যে তোমরা এটা করো এখানে। We want you to think for yourselves. আমরা চাই যে তোমরা নিজেরাই পরিচালনা করো মানে চিন্তা করো। So teachers should not control minds. তাই শিক্ষকদের উচিত নয় মন পরিচালনা করা। খুবই কঠোর যদি তুমি কখনো কাকে অসম্মান করতে তাহলে তোমাকে হয়তো মারা হইতো মাঝে মাঝে শাসন করা বা পিছনে মারা ঠিক আছে কিন্তু সতর্ক থাকতে হবে কারণ মাঝে মাঝে শিক্ষা ভালোবাসা দিয়েও শিখতে হবে Now the third one was that teachers should be with their students not just in front of them and then leave. আর তৃতীয় জিনিস যেটা তুমি শিখেছিলে সেটা হচ্ছে শিক্ষা শিক্ষকদের উচিত শিক্ষার্থীদের সাথে থাকা তাদের সামনে দাঁড়িয়ে কথা বলে চলে যাওয়া। Okay. They should draw close to their students. তাদের উচিত শিক্ষার্থীদের কাছে কাছে চলে যাওয়া। They should know more about their students than just their grades. তাদের গ্রেড বা তার তাদের ফলাফল কি রকম সেটা জানার পরিবর্তে আর একটু বেশি জানা উচিত তার শিক্ষার্থীদের ব্যাপারে। When Jesus was with his disciples. যিশু যখন তার অনুসারীদের সঙ্গে ছিলেন। He didn't just teach them the 10 commandments. তিনি শুধুমাত্র তাদের ওই 10টা আজ্ঞা শিখাননি 10 আজ্ঞা শিখাননি। He showed them the 10 commandments. তিনি তাদেরকে দেখিয়েছিলেন 10 আজ্ঞা। I want to share one last, I want to share a thought with you. আমি তোমাদের সাথে একটা চিন্তা সভা করতে চাই। You can quote me on this. I don't know who came up with it, but I like it so much. আমি জানি না যে এটা কে করেছিল কিন্তু আমি কে বলেছিল কিন্তু আমি এটা অনেক পছন্দ করি। True education teaches you who to be. সুষম শিক্ষা শিখায় যে তুমি কে। False education teaches you what to know. thing that our schools should teach even at a very young age is physiology young people should be taught from a young age how to take care of their health remember all those problems in the 1800s not taking baths gosol korto na lots of bad drug medicine je onek kharap drug chilo jeta oshudh hishebe byabohar korto eating wrong things at wrong times oshomoy oshomoy kharap khabar khao 
These things are lessons that should be taught to young people from a very young age. And last of all, physical labor. For the health of the students, and also to help them pay for their school expenses. Most of all, the purpose of our schools is to equip young people to be missionaries for God. That's why the Bible is at the center. And that's why we teach labor so that whether you get paid or not, you have a way to support yourself in the field. I'm excited for what God is doing here. We don't have to repeat this, the mistakes. We can follow God's instructions. Quick reminder. Today, your second outline is due. If you have questions, ask me after class. Also, on Thursday, your reading from uh, the book Education is due. Thursday. Thursday. And that's all. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, we thank you for education. Please help us to learn what you want us to learn here at Be Well. We ask that you will be our teacher. In Jesus' name.